So let's talk about how to strengthen your red blood cell. But before I talk about that, I need to explain what a red blood cell does in your body. They're called erythrocytes, okay? And they're there as a method of carrying oxygen. And what they have in this red blood cell, it's like a sac with a bunch of hemoglobin. And that's basically uh, filled with iron and it connects to oxygen. So it allows oxygen to be transported through the body. And in one red blood cell, you have 270 million hemoglobin molecules. So it's quite a bit of oxygen that cell is carrying. Your body makes 2.4 million red blood cells every single second. And they're made in a factory inside your long bones. A red blood cell will last between 100 and 120 days. And it takes about one minute for a red blood cell to travel from your lung all the way through your body and back to the lung. So what the red blood cell is doing, it's going to the tiny capillaries and it's getting squished and it's pushing the oxygen into the tissues that way. And it comes back without oxygen. And then you breathe and it gets reoxygenated. It just does this over and over and over. The interesting thing about the red blood cell is it has no nucleus. That's the center of the cell. It has no DNA or RNA. Now, what's interesting about that is that viruses use your DNA to replicate. So the viruses can't hurt or mess with your red blood cells. Now, as far as the quantity of red blood cell, you have between 20 and 30 trillion red blood cells. That makes up 70% of all of your cells. So you have a lot of red blood cells in your body. The other interesting thing about the red blood cell is that it can't use ketones for fuel. It uses glucose. Now you might say, well, oh, well, where's that gonna come from? Well, your body can very easily make glucose. It's called gluconeogenesis. It can make it from ketones. It can make it from fat. It can make it from protein. So you don't need to consume glucose to feed your red blood cell. Now, if you're deficient in red blood cells, uh, like you're anemic, whether you have an iron deficiency or a B12 deficiency, and I don't wanna create a video on problems with your red blood cell at this point, but if you do have not enough red blood cells, you're gonna be tired, shortness of breath. You're gonna feel weak because you, you don't have enough oxygen uh, through the body. So now the question is, what can you do to strengthen your red blood cells? Well, first of all, you have to make sure you have enough iron, okay? But not too much. And you wanna make sure you have B12. Very, very important, okay? But there's something else you can do and it's called intermittent hypoxia training. Now, what does that mean? Intermittent, meaning you're gonna do something and then not do it. Hypoxia, meaning without oxygen or low oxygen training. A lot of top athletes do this and there's quite a bit of research. Uh, whether they use a mask when they're working out or they're in a chamber or they have a hypoxic uh, uh, tent, uh, there's many different ways to actually do this training. So basically you starve oxygen to the body uh, for a little bit and then you breathe back and forth. Now what I like to do is I like to use a hypoxic mask, not when I'm doing a certain type of exercises where I'm not breathing very much. I like to do it when I'm hopping and puffing. So I will wear this mask for about two minutes and then I'll take it off for two minutes and I'll put it on for two minutes and I'll restrict my oxygen. I've done other videos on hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is really, really cool because it puts oxygen into your brain, into your tissues, it's very therapeutic. What's fascinating about this therapy, it's the exact opposite. We're taking oxygen from the body. Now, at first you might think, wow, this is a stupid thing to do. But if you really understand what's happening, it's actually quite smart. When you starve the body of oxygen for a short period of time, not a long period of time, you trigger certain genes that create significant changes within the red blood cell. You increase the red blood cell production by up to 10 times. So instead of making 2.4 million red blood cells every single second, you're making 30 million red blood cells every second. That is huge. You also increase the size of the red blood cell. Now, what is the significance of this? You're basically gonna carry way more oxygen. 
So when you do a workout or exercise, you're going to last a lot longer. When you sleep, you're going to sleep better. You're going to have a better quality of sleep. And also, there's various therapeutic benefits to things like chronic lung disease or asthma or hypertension, diabetes, or even Parkinson's. So you're driving more oxygen to the tissues. And if there's an area of your body that's not healing well, um, this can help it. It will also stimulate your antioxidant reserve, especially in the heart. And that's why this therapy is also cardioprotective as well as neuroprotective. So if you want more information about intermittent hypoxic therapy, I created a video. It's right here. Check it out. I'm back. And today we're going to talk about something actually very fascinating. Um, you may have never heard about this before, but it's called intermittent hypoxic training. Okay. So we're going to talk about the benefits of intermittent hypoxic training or therapy. All right. What is this? Well, it's a training or therapy very similar to training in high altitudes. You're giving your body lower amounts of oxygen. And this is the key term intermittently. Okay. Because if you cut down the oxygen too low, too long, it could be dangerous. Just like fasting is really good short term, but not for two years. So by giving your body little doses of hypoxia, a lack of oxygen, you can create an amazing adaptation. Some of the videos I've done recently were about giving the body more oxygen, right? This is about taking the oxygen away. A lot of the top athletes do this type of training to get the unfair advantage. Number two, chronic lung diseases. Doing this training at the right intervals under supervision can increase your oxygen carrying capacity greatly. Number three, bronchial asthma. And by the way, both of these right here would benefit greatly from vitamin D as well. Okay, number four, hypertension. Five, diabetes. Number six, brain damage. Let's say, for example, you had Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. Doing this training can cause your body to just carry more oxygen and feed the areas that are hypoxic. Number seven, radiation toxicity. Number eight, increasing of your antioxidant network. When you put your body in a hypoxic state, it starts to rebound and starts creating antioxidants like crazy. Number nine, it increases the number of mitochondria. Wow. Number 10, and actually I think this is the most amazing thing. It will increase not only the number of red blood cells, but the size of your red blood cells so you can carry more oxygen. So you're making super red blood cells. This is amazing. Number 11, it helps release excessive amounts of calcium from the cell. Number 12, it'll increase oxygen to your tissues. That's probably why it helps diabetes, asthma, and brain damage. And number 13, it decreases oxidative stress. All right, so how do you do it? You can get a device like this, which is a little mask over your mouth right here where you can breathe. And then you know, can you hear me right now? Probably can't hear me. But basically, this restricts air and you can use different settings that will simulate different altitudes. So maybe you start at 3,000 feet and you slowly go up to 19,000 feet and you're mimicking the amount of oxygen at different altitudes. And there's other ways to do it too. Uh, one way is like you're on this uh, bicycle and you're breathing in less amount of oxygen and more nitrogen to create the same effect. So one pattern might look like uh, between three to five minutes of hypoxic air where you're breathing more CO2 and then two to five minutes of ambient normal air back and forth for let's say 45 minutes. And then what you can do is you can get a pulse oximeter. They're very inexpensive. You can get them from Amazon and that'll measure the amount of oxygen in your blood as your feedback mechanism. Now, before I did hyperbaric, my uh, oxygen was 95 and now it's 100. But when you're doing this training, it'll go down to 85 temporarily, but then it goes right back up to where you were. So this is just another tool that you can use to create a hormetic effect, which basically you're giving a small amount of stress intermittently to cause the body to rebound and adapt and become even stronger. All right. Thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.